y'all, let's talk about executive dysfunction today. Uh, you may call it pain brain. You may call it brain fog. You may call it annoying. Uh, you may call it a lot of things, but I would like to look at the connection between executive dysfunction or pain brain and chronic pain. So the first thing we need, well, first, let me say hi. If you, uh, if this is your first time seeing me, my name is Amy Eicher and I am a chronic pain coach. I experienced 20 years of chronic pain and I'm now almost 11 years pain-free. Um, and I help motivated women experiencing chronic pain get back to lives they love through the use of movement, education, and self-discovery. So today we're gonna deal with a little bit of executive dysfunction, pain brain. You all know this, this experience, right? So it's a high pain day. You've got to make decisions about like what to eat, what to do with the kids, what to do with your parents, what to do at work, right? And it's like your brain just doesn't want to work. Like you do just, you can't make a decision. You can't find the information in the Rolodex that you need, Rolodex being your brain. And it's just, it's, it's really frustrating. You can't remember things. You've asked the same question 15 times, knowing that you got an answer, but not being able to remember the answer, right? Yeah. So that's executive dysfunction. It's a, it's akin to the brain's executive team, like decision-making, juggling multiple tasks simultaneously. Um, but, but it's like somebody kind of like gave, gave the team some time off. Um, this well-oiled machine that, that is used to clipping along start, starts to falter and get out of sync. And it's, you're really having trouble managing these things. Executive dysfunction is the process that helps us plan, prioritize, and execute tasks. So uh, another way that my clients talk about this is, Amy, I know everything that needs to get done, but then it's like a 400 pound weight just lands on me and I can't do it. Like I just, it's not that I'm in more pain. It's that I can't, I cannot find the will to get up and do the thing. That is executive dysfunction. The inability to decide what you want for dinner. That's executive, executive dysfunction. Not being sure uh, like what thing to do first or how to break down the task. That's executive dysfunction. And I think it's, uh, I think another way that we can think of it is like mental hiccups, little, little hiccup in the system. So please understand this is not a matter of willpower. It's not a reflection of your intelligence. It's not a reflection of your value. It's up here. It's a neurological hiccup. And it comes from chemical distortions and, and the things that happen inside of our brain when we are experiencing pain. So a lot of people tend to feel like they're lazy when this happens or like they just don't have the drive that they used to. I'm going to suggest it's that you don't have the dopamine and the norepinephrine that you used to. It's, it's, a, it's a chemical problem. When we are in pain, and this is changeable, by the way, let's just be super clear about that. This is changeable. But when we are in pain, the prefrontal cortex, which is the refining part, it's like the super smart part of our brain. That portion of our brain doesn't work as well. It doesn't get access as much. It, it, it struggles, which is why things like this feel like Herculean tasks. The pain brain or the brain in pain that belongs to the person in pain functions a lot more in the amygdala or the limbic system. This is really the area, it's, it's further back in the head, which is why I always tap back here. But um, we're more prone to making decisions out of emotion than we are out of refined thought. Um, procrastination is another symptom of executive dysfunction. It's because you're, you're, you just don't have access to as much of that part of your brain as you do when you're not in pain. So um, if you are curious about these ideas, you can go to restoringvenus.com uh, backslash executive dysfunction. There's a blog post on it. 
can read more. But know that uh, a lot of people in the ADHD space are talking about executive dysfunction, what to do with it, why it happens. And while the mechanisms may be different between you and somebody with ADHD, the solutions are the same. So if you are somebody that likes to dive into the deeper aspects of these things, I strongly encourage you to follow some of those ADHD creators. Um, and they, they share wonderful ways to deal with executive dysfunction, which I might note for us gets worse when we're in more pain or we have more stress. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a couple quick ways to deal with executive dysfunction, but mostly I just want you to know that you're not crazy. You're not lazy. You haven't lost your will to live. Like you've got, you've got some chemical disruption, uh, which is why I always say, I know the doc probably offered antidepressants because you're presenting as depressed and you're like, no, 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 I'm just in pain. Uh, there are antidepressants that increase our dopamine and norepinephrine and can help with executive dysfunction. So that may be something you want to talk to your doc about. So if this is, if you are struggling with pain brain, that may be something that you can talk with your doc or your care team about. I am going to make other suggestions on ways to make managing your executive dysfunction easier now. Ready? Okay, one, a structured routine. Structure and routine helps because it is rote. You are not constantly making decisions about what to do next. You have already built your day around the routine. Doesn't mean you don't get to be spontaneous. It doesn't mean it has to be rigid. But if you introduce a framework about, you know, we eat here, we pre-plan meals, we pre-plan what we're wearing, like you can decrease the decision fatigue by pre-planning things. So having a structure with breaks and general activity. So like, I'm gonna do some kind of housework here and then I'm gonna take a break. And then I'm gonna do something kid oriented here. And then I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna go to work here and then take a break. I, like, it depends on what you do. Like, obviously if you're at work for eight hours then you've got less time to plan because you're already at work. Um, but if you're at home, you've got a lot of time that you're gonna need to kind of chunk out. And if it, if it has a general topic, it makes it easier to know that something in, in that vein needs to go there. Like I'm gonna do something to clean the house. Well, you don't need to decide exactly what you're gonna do, but you know that that's the time for that task. Makes it easier to initiate and to figure out what to do, All right? You're like, okay, okay, Amy, that's not a problem. I'm fantastic at organizing my time, but I get stuck on certain tasks. I got you. Uh, coping mechanism number two is breaking tasks down into their teeniest, tiniest parts. So let's say I'm having trouble making my morning coffee. That would never happen, but it's an easy task to break down. Okay, I'm going to pick my mug. Okay, got the mug. I'm going to put the mug underneath the coffee maker. I'm going to pull out the coffee pot. I'm going to choose one of the four coffees above my head because I keep my coffee in ball jars above my head. I'm gonna put it into the Keurig cup, right? You see, like, instead of just saying, I'm gonna make coffee and then just doing all of those steps, I've broken it down into the teeny tiny achievable steps. You can do that for anything. I need to mop the kitchen floor, okay? I need to get out the mop. Yay, I did it. I need to fill the bucket with water. Yay, I did it. I need to put the detergent into the bucket. Yay, I did it, right? Because dopamine is our reward drug. And so every time we meet a goal, we get a little dose of dopamine. So by breaking down small, by breaking down overwhelming ta tasks into smaller sections, we get dopamine, we get a feeling of accomplishment, and we start to build momentum, which can help break through that executive dysfunction. I promise it sounds crazy, but it works. Okay, option number three, utilizing tools like planners, digital calendars, alarms, reminder apps, what have you, okay? 
trying to keep track of things with my long COVID brain anymore is ridiculous. I am entirely dependent on my phone. It needs to be charged at all times because I call it my external brain. It's like my external hard drive. I, if I have an appointment, I have a reminder set ahead of time so that I don't miss it. I have things in there like, um, I don't, I don't, I mean, my cats remind me that I need to feed them. So I don't, I don't have to worry about that, but gentle reminders, uh, using the tools that we have in today's day and age to help keep you on task. Or if you get time blind and you get like involved in a task and you're afraid you're going to miss something else you need to do, set the timer. It helps decrease and manage the cognitive load that we're experiencing that because of our pain, our brain not be, may not really be able to handle on that particular day. Um, option number four, practice self-compassion. This is really the most crucial strategy to anything that we do in chronic pain because we need to decrease uh, that fight or flight. So we need to be gentle with ourselves so that we're not creating an unsafe system inside. You're struggling, you're not failing, okay? Let me say that again. You're struggling, you're not failing. Be gentle with yourself. You're going through something, you're having a moment, and it's completely human, ease up. It's all right. It'll get done. It may just not get done as well or in the time frame that you'd planned. And option number five is get support. Your healthcare professionals, therapy, support group, loved ones, ask for help. You do not need to be Superman or Superwoman. It's okay to ask for help. It is human to ask for help. But if you stop and think about it, you help people all the time with things. But do you ask for help? Something to think about. I get not all these strategies are one size fits all. They are not for everybody, but they're starting points. They're jumping off points, if you will, because I know when my brain doesn't work the way that I want it to, I get super frustrated. I get super frustrated. And generally, I have to start by stopping and breathing and starting with that self-compassion, remembering to be kind to myself. So please remember that your journey through chronic pain is uniquely yours. The level to which you're going to experience Pain brain is, is uniquely yours. And my experience may not be your experience and your experience may not be somebody else's. We experience it to varying degrees at different times. It's okay to have challenges and it's okay to ask for help. The more that you can get support, feel understood, break things down and ask for help, the easier life is going to be and the quicker you will be able to regain some control of your life. You are resilient. You are strong. And there is hope. See you in the next one.